There's that air of authenticity that is just impossible to replicate with a story that we know is wholly fabricated. And this is why genuine true stories are so highly valued within the world of media production. One show that isn't faking its authentic roots, however, is The Shrink Next Door. And it's today's video we're going to be delving into all the details of the real life story behind the show. First things first, what is The Shrink Next Door? I can't blame you if you haven't heard of The Shrink Next Door. It's not a blockbuster title being brought to us by Netflix or even Amazon Prime, who along with HBO and maybe Disney Plus seem to comprise the real heavyweights when it comes to streaming at this stage. It's also not a show that tries to appeal to a large mainstream audience. It's an eerie and strange psychological drama miniseries, and it's recently premiered on Apple TV Plus as part of their attempts at establishing themselves as a rival for the companies I mentioned just a few seconds ago. Developed by Georgia Pritchett and directed by the combo of Michael Showalter and Jesse Peretz, most well known for The Big Sick and Girls, respectively, The Shrink Next Door follows the story of Marty, who begins to take therapy to get his life in order. His therapist, Dr. Ike, seems like the perfect helping hand at first, but as things progress, Ike begins to take more and more control over Marty's life, crossing the boundaries between patient and doctor in a twisted way. Marty is played by Emmy-nominated Will Ferrell, whilst Marvel star Paul Rudd takes up the role of Dr. Ike, the two men leading what is a rather small but very solid cast. The show has received generally positive reviews for all of the episodes released so far, and its final episode entitled The Breakthrough, set to hit Apple TV on the 10th of this month, despite two actors well known for comedy occupying the two main roles, the show does doesn't utilize comedy much outside of dark jokes. So if you're looking for something lighthearted, you may want to give it a miss. If you're looking for something that'll have you on the edge of your seat, however, definitely consider it. So what's it based on? As I mentioned in the intro, The Shrink Next Door has a lot going for it in the whole authenticity department. The TV show is actually an adaptation of a podcast series that was hosted on the Wondery Network, premiering on the 21st of May 2019, and consists of 13 episodes in total. Joe Nocera wrote and produced the podcast, and it spent an entire three weeks at the top of Apple's podcast charts, as well as winning the 2020 Webby Award for Best Documentary Style Podcast. Did I say documentary? I sure did, because ultimately, both versions of The Shrink Next Door are based upon entirely real events. A horrifyingly legitimate story of a genuine therapist abusing his power to take control of the lives of his patients. What makes this all so interesting, perhaps, is the fact that this story wasn't one that Nocera just happened to look up one day and decide, wow, that'll make a cool narrative. It's one that he uncovered for himself. As well as hosting and producing podcasts, Nocera is also an investigative journalist, and he just so happened to live next door to Dr. Ike. Can you see where the title of the show comes from? Nocera found himself bothered by Ike, who by this point was almost a celebrity himself, a psychiatrist to the stars, who hosted huge parties inside his lavish mansion. Upon discovering that the mansion actually belonged to the man who seemed to be the doctor's hired help, Marty Markowitz, Nocera began a multi-year investigation into the truth behind the pair's relationship, uncovering decades worth of abuse and manipulation that had left the doctor in control of every facet of Marty's life. Now that we've been over all the background, it's finally time to get into the real meat of this video, the real story of Dr. Ike and Marty Markowitz. Hold on to your seat, because things are about to get very crazy very quickly. First up, how it all started. From the outside looking in, Marty Markowitz seemed to have a lot of things going on for him. In 1981, he was the owner of a lucrative textile, making him a rather wealthy man by the time he turned 39 years old. Unfortunately, the reality of this situation was that Marty was going through perhaps one of the most difficult periods of his entire life. Both of his parents had recently passed away, leaving him to inherit a company that he was not prepared to run. He was struggling so much that his own uncle was spearheading an attempt at ousting him from the business. To make matters worse, he had also broken up with his fiancée, who ended the engagement after he asked her to sign a prenup. With his life in turmoil, Marty was recommended by his rabbi to go visit a psychiatrist. With the charismatic Dr. Isaac Hirschkampf, or as he 
asked his patients to call him Ike. Marty was initially skeptical, having been to therapy before, but there was just something different about Ike, something that made him far more helpful than any other professional Marty had seen previously. The pair became so close that Marty began to visit Ike three times a week, and that's when the doctor slowly began his manipulation. With Marty's confidence and self-worth already low, Ike began to, in the words of Marty himself, pour salt into open wounds, convincing Marty that nobody truly cared for him except Ike. And this led to perhaps one of the most heartbreaking parts of the entire tale. Next up, Marty's sister. With Ike continuing to exert his influence over Marty, he was able to convince his patient that even his own family cared little for him, and that Marty should be taking steps to distance himself from them, including his sister, Phyllis Shapiro. Phyllis had always been rather suspect of Ike, finding it strange how close this psychiatrist was getting with her brother after all. He was Marty's doctor, not his friend. Shapiro became particularly alarmed as she noticed that Ike was now becoming involved in the running of the family's fabric business, making company decisions for Marty and sticking his finger into the family's fortune. A couple years after the first therapy session, Ike instructed Marty to lower his sister's pay by $5,000, which he did multiple times, further straining the relationship as a result. Having had enough, Phyllis removed gold coins, a large portion of inherited money, and savings bonds from a joint account held with her brother, hoping both to protect it from Ike and force Marty to talk with her. Instead, Marty fired her from the company and cut her out of his life completely. He wouldn't speak with her again for another 27 years. But not to worry, because Ike's family was there to fill the void, with the doctor promising that they were like Marty's new family. This was simply laying the groundwork for getting Marty to rewrite his will, in which he would leave everything in his possession to Ike and his family. Throughout the years, Phyllis kept making attempts to contact Marty, but anytime she would send a message or even a Christmas card, Ike would confiscate it and find some way of twisting it into being an act of malice. Ike also took steps to ensure that Marty never found love, warning him off of any potential relationship by convincing him all the women who showed interest in him were gold diggers. Ironic, I know. With Marty all alone, he was left vulnerable to the last act of Ike's plan. Up next, taking Marty's money. As we've already mentioned, Ike had Marty rewrite his will so that upon his death, he would leave everything, including all of his money, to the doctor and his family. But it's not like Ike was waiting around for that to happen. Ike instructed Marty to buy a large mansion in the town of Southampton, which Ike immediately seized control of and began using to host legendary parties. Whilst Ike and his family would enjoy rubbing shoulders with various celebrities, Marty was put to work, serving food and cleaning as if he were a caretaker. Marty continued to purchase luxuries that Ike would use, such as an 18-hole golf course and a swimming pool. Ike's control over the household was so firmly entrenched that he eventually had his name put onto the mailbox, with Marty being banished to the guest compound at the back of the house. Despite owning the property, Marty was denied access to much of the ground, even being banned from keeping his food in the kitchen. Ike also had himself made the president of that highly lucrative fabric company we mentioned, as well as becoming a joint signatory of Marty's Swiss bank account, which had around $1 million in it. All in all, it's estimated that Marty lost in advance of $6 million from his association with Ike. Finally, aftermath. In 2010, Marty underwent a hernia operation, and when Ike couldn't even be bothered to visit him in the hospital, he finally seemed to realize what had been happening the last 30 years. He quickly set up changing his will, cutting ties with Ike, and and for the first time since he walked away from his sister, he attempted to communicate with her. Due to the popularity of The Shrink Next Door, Ike has finally been found out and has had his license stripped by the New York State Department of Health, who found 16 different types of professional misconduct against him. And that is everything. What did you think of this story? Have you been watching The Shrink Next Door? Will you? Let us know in the comments, and until next time, see you soon.